Good afternoon. Let's see what time it is. Boop, boop, boop. Can't focus. Boom. 153. All right. Um, quick update. We got a lot of crap going on today, so I wanted to just quickly show the video. Um, I think it was yesterday. Yeah, man, I'm getting old. Yesterday, I showed you guys a video that I was taking apart the catalyst, my first build ever, and transferring the frame. Cleaning it up a little bit, um, the motors aren't attached, so if I touch it, they're just going to flop, so I'll do it anyway as a joke. Um, I swapped frames, I went to the Strix Screech frame, like my brother Quadfather, he also is building his, hopefully, hopefully Quad, if you see this, do a damn video, bro. Get it out there, start putting content out, do it. But um, I put the frame together, move the GoPro, so I'll smash the GoPro. I don't know how well this will translate. Will it focus? Yeah, I've had problems with this phone when I dropped it focusing, so we'll, hopefully when they fix it. Um, receiver back there. Zip tied down, nice and neat, power wires going around it. Um, I have to use this antenna for now until I find another one because when ordering before I understood the shit, I got the wrong SMA versus RS, whatever the hell it is. One's got a male, one's got a female, so that's why the extra adapter to make this one work with that one. It's alright, this is my inexpensive build, so it's not the end of the world. If the electronics go, I will update and do it all over again because it's a lot of fun. So down in there, it is super clean. We're running a few wires. There's some um, hot glue on the top. Uh, I double-sided taped the VTX down and then used some small dabs of hot glue um, because I can't see it. The wire there that goes to the antenna is longer than I needed but actually worked out well because I ordered a short one that wouldn't have worked. So it sides the antenna, the antenna's on the other side, it wraps around, this side comes back. So I used some hot glue to keep the wires in place. Shortened a lot of wires. Um, the only wire I don't like, which really doesn't stand out that much. If you see there, there's a little green wire, and then there's two silver wires up top. I decided to try some fun and different, you know me and my LEDs. Um, these are the programmable ones. Right now, I have them at just white. Um, they're just enough behind the camera where um, the quick check that I did, they're not putting any kind of glare on the camera. And again, I could probably make a little shield to, uh, let me close that door, hold on, Ugh. to uh, block it if it, you know, becomes bad. Um, what else? Oh, my bad, bumped me. When I do the motor wires, I'm debating if I want to run them because I'm going to cut most of this off. I do, it's a pain in the ass because I put it back together already and not wait to get back in there. Show me in there a little bit. To get in there to where the motor wires are. So I might just cut these short. I'm debating if I want to go down, under, and around or just go across the top and then something nice and clean to cover up the wires over the arm. I'm not sure yet. Haven't decided. Um, the motors will be green though. I'm still not telling what motors they are. And I'm not saying what motors are going back on that guy there. Tatas. Tatas. I love that frame. I know it's heavy. Um, it's not as popular as many frames, but the Fly Egg 100 was one of my favorite micro builds. I loved how that thing flew because it was a little heavy and the way it just dug into the turns, the momentum it had. So I'm hoping that this guy flies the same way. I just love, love dig, love dig, dig that frame. It definitely came out super cool. Just got to wait for the antenna adapter um, when that motor decided to let go. On my test flight, it ripped. Where is I just put it away, didn't I? The little ULA to um, SMA connector or IPX, whatever it comes on the VTX 03s, it ripped that right out. It's no big deal. Got one on order from Get FPV that are coming with my motors, hopefully tomorrow. Then there'd be an epic, epic. I might be able to pop out a video for that tomorrow. I don't know. Uh, we made plans with some friends to go out to Stafford. So I might not get permission <laughs> from the boss to do a video. So I might have to wait till Saturday. And then um, I think the weather's supposed to be decent. So I can get some flight footage out of that. And then same thing. This guy should be right around the corner with the motors for that. I don't have to wait for the adapter because I just used the one that was on there. Um, I'm super digging this frame. It's kind of neat because the whole bottom plate... It's open, so the camera hangs down just a little bit, but with the battery on it, you're not hitting it. But it gives you the ability to have such a streamlined, low-profile platform. And I was contemplating lifting it up 
and giving it a little bit more thickness, but I'm like, you know what? It looks sick, so I'm not messing with it. For now, I'm going to leave this long. I'm going to have to zip tie the zip tie, strap the battery in and wiggle this around, see if this is, what's that piece of sh oh, it's glue? Um, see if that's going to be too long and an inconvenience to wrap that down to the battery. I just lost my brain. Um, for now, nothing fancy. Again, this is the poor boy build, so it's, you know, this is the one I'm going to send off over the ocean and stuff. And I don't remember if I talked about it the other day. Um, I told you in one of the videos I definitely talked about that I was having problems with um, getting oscillation about 20-30% throttle. And I was thinking the whole time it was a flight controller. And if I repeat myself, I apologize. But I'm thinking that because that frame was broken, that all that vibration that was created by the moving parts and stuff um, was translating right into the flight controller and giving me that oscillation. I could be way off and wrong. We'll find out. But either way, I did a small soft mount. One of my favorite little things in all my parts is um, the little rubber isolators that Tiny Whoops have on the corners of their board when you screw it down to you know stop some of the vibration that's created by these small little things to not screw up the flight controller. So you cut one of those in half, it fits. It already had it soft mounted on the bottom that you don't need on the um, ESC board, but I doubled it. So I did it there and I did it there. So hopefully it will eliminate any of the vibration. Um, this thing's solid, so it shouldn't wiggle. I love this frame. So it will look much better once it's got some killer green motors on it. Um, yeah, and then the GoPro. The GoPro survived the crash because I had it on Tata's. I'm going to have to reattach the uh, mount for it, but it survived. Let's see there. And then I'm going to tune when I go back in because the, obviously the frame's different. It might fly a little different, weight difference. You know, just the, the stretch longer back. Um, I'll tune it with this in it because I fly it more with these in it than not. So I want it to fly a particular way. So we might as well do it with this. Um, the GoPro mount wasn't made for this. But I lucked out because the way it's set up on the other one, the screws in the back actually worked. And this time it's on the front. So I epoxied around the spots in the back. The zip tie goes through underneath. So it's got mount there and it's screwed right through there. I blacked out a little bit around trying to give you that bubble eye look you know, like a blacked out tail light or something like that over around the uh, the lens thing there it won't mess with any of the light output because I left the face part alone that is hot glued in there so if I ever decide to change it instead of super glue I'll be able to just right out. Um, and that's it I think it came out fantastic it I you know I'll weigh it after the motors are on it it feels a little bit lighter, even though that there is a bit more frame considering these, I think they're four mil um, arms. They're pretty badass. That receiver's not going anywhere. Double-sided tape and then cross-ect, X'd, zip-tied. And the reason why I did that, and I don't know if you're going to see it, let's flop these motors around a little more and let's get back in there. And I melt the face on these so there's no sharp edges. I wanted the wires to go around the power wires and the ground wire to go around the receiver and not constantly push on the plug, stressing it out, moving it around. So when I uh, resoldered them, I had them go out and around and then boom, zip tied. Came back out nice and clean. So that's where I'm at. I appreciate your time. Let me know what you think. And if you have any questions, that's what I'm here for. And if people are looking into getting into build, because, you know, I talked to a lot of people on some of the chats, you know, like the Canadian Drone Hub, and there's some guys out there questioning, should I buy or should I make? Um, I've bought, I still, you know, I'll buy a, a Mavic Air, um, and I forgot what the other one I bought. It was the, shit, I forgot. Uh, like, I was given. It was the Diatone GTR something something, and I loved it. It ended up dying, I had a bad board, but I rebuilt it. But, you know, pre-builds are good, you know, you just tune them a little bit, and they're right out the box and go. But when you get something like this, where you, oh, it's too bright, where you can get something like this, get the parts and then have somebody to help you build it. The pride you take into it is a whole different thing. You've built this. It goes out there and it flies and it does what you want. So I highly encourage and recommend that you build. On that note, about to run out of time. Peace. Explicit out.